Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ebony Wortham, and I am the supervisor of the Juvenile Unit in the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office and one of the coordinators of the Do the Right Thing Philadelphia uh, program. We are very, very excited to announce the reestablishment of Do the Right Thing in Philadelphia. Today we have city leaders from the District Attorney's Office, City Council, and the School District of Philadelphia here today to talk to you about the Do the Right Thing program and its significance here in the City of Philadelphia. But first, let me introduce the chair of the Do the Right Thing program, the Honorable Judge Lori A. Dumas. She has been a tireless advocate for children in the City of Philadelphia for nearly 20 years. And today she builds on that work by establishing and initiating the Do the Right Thing campaign here in Philadelphia and by creating very important partnerships with city leaders across the city of Philadelphia. Would you please welcome me in joining and asking Judge Lori Dumas to join us here on the podium. Good afternoon. My name is Judge Lori Dumas and I am so honored to be here today because today we are reintroducing the campaign uh, in this Philadelphia area, Do the Right Thing Challenge. And this challenge was, is a national program and it really is not new to Philadelphia because quite a few years ago, we had leadership of this same challenge by Judge Renee Caldwell Hughes as well as Judge Paul Penapinto. But it has been dormant for a little while and our team has had the privilege of reintroducing it to Philadelphia. And we are bringing it back to the city to showcase and highlight young Philadelphians. The Do the Right Thing Challenge Program seeks to empower youth through their artistic expressions with the ability to, re to reduce youth violence. According to the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention, 60% of all American youth are exposed to violence, crime, or abuse at some point. Research has shown that students involved in the Do the Right Thing Challenge have more positive behaviors and attitudes towards their peers and teachers, but participants also walk away motivated to do more in their communities to make them safe. Hundreds of schools across the country have been given this unique opportunity to communicate their thoughts on the impact of violence in their lives, and more importantly, to make a personal commitment to reduce violence. It is important that we hear from young people and promote early intervention strategies in our schools to help create dialogue with our youth. One thing that makes this campaign unique is that students are encouraged to submit their work through various forms of expression. Students can communicate their thoughts in many creative ways through essays, plays, songs, and poems. The Do the Right Thing Challenge will afford students the opportunity to send a direct message to other youth and to begin to create platforms where young people make better choices and incorporate conflict resolution into their daily lives. We are so excited to have the District Attorney's Office, the School District of Philadelphia, and the Philadelphia Police Department on board and here with us today. Philly, Philadelphia City Council was also very, very instrumental in helping us reestablish the program citywide. And I think that we all know that in order to impact significantly any issue that plagues our society, such as violence, it takes a partnership. It takes collaborations with stakeholders, and we all have to work as a team to bring about change. So I just want to especially thank the school district for its partnership and support in getting our schools on board. Um, we have a principal here today uh, from one of our participating schools, um, the district attorney's office and its representative um, that you'll hear from shortly, Mr. Listenby, uh, the Philadelphia Police Department represented by its head uh, agent, uh, our police commissioner Ross is here with us today and City Council, we have City Council here as well. City Council member, um, um, excuse me, City Council member um, Kenyatta Johnson. We have other City Council members that were supposed to be here today, um, but they're, they haven't gotten here yet. But we do have the full support from them and we appreciate everyone's collaboration. Thank you so much. At this time, I'm going to introduce um, our representative from the uh, 
District Attorney's Office, uh, Robert Listenby. Mr. Listenby, thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you very much, Your Honor. It's, it's certainly an honor and a pleasure to be here. Uh, when I first heard uh, from Judge Dumas that the city of Philadelphia was going to become engaged in the Do the Right Thing uh, campaign, I was thrilled. We're also very thrilled to have the head of our juvenile unit, Ms. Ebony Wortham, uh, be the coordinator of the Do the Right Thing uh, challenge. I first came in contact with this program when I served as administrator of the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention in Washington, D.C., working for President Obama. And uh, I found that it is an inspiring program. Each day here in Philadelphia, our children are exposed to all types of violence and traumatic circumstances. This program gives them an opportunity to both express their experiences, explain to, we as, uh, to those of us as adults exactly what those experiences were, how they felt about them, and also, very importantly, to provide a youth voice to this discussion about how we uh, end violence in our city and how we help those who've been traumatized by violence in our city. So I'm thrilled that, that we have joined this effort again. The students do wonderful things in Washington, visiting executives from the executive branch, visiting Congress people. I had an opportunity to work with them at the Supreme Court of the United States, where young people who've written these essays came and actually read their essays to uh, clerks from the Supreme Court, who were sent down there by the justices to hear about violence and what we're doing about it. So again, I'm thrilled to be here. The district attorney's office is fully supportive of, of new efforts to end violence in our city and to help those children who've been exposed to violence to thrive and move forward with their lives. I want to thank Judge Dumas for her uh, our energy, for her enthusiasm, for her dedication, to really see, for seeing that this is the kind of program that can help our children. And I'm very pleased to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Listenby. Is there someone here from uh, President uh, Clark's office representing the office? Okay, so we're gonna move on and I am going to properly introduce um, our uh, Councilman Kenyatta Johnson because I, I really messed it up the last time. So Councilman Johnson is, uh, represents the second council, Councilmatic District. He is the chair of the Special Committee on Gun Violence Prevention and he is absolutely without a doubt passionate about reducing the violence and improving young people's quality of life. So with that, Councilman. Could we just start off by just giving um, the Honorable Lloyd Dumas a round of applause for Henri um, starting this particular program. As mentioned, I'm Councilman King out of Johnson for the Second Councilmanic District. I also serve as a chair on the Special Committee on Gun Violence. And for me, this is an issue I'm very passionate about. Um, after losing a cousin in 1998, I started my own program called Peace Not Guns to teach young people a pathway out of the violence that they are seeing on a day-to-day -day basis inside their neighborhoods. I want to acknowledge uh, one of the schools that will, be, that will be participating, Principal Johnson from Tilden Middle School. Give him a round of applause as well. Um, he's also joined here by Regina Young, who runs um, the Mayor's um, Community Schools Program at Tilden Middle School. And so, um, for me, it's just about being supportive of this program. But um, I asked one of my staff members, who's going to be the point person in running this project, just to say a few words about um, why she's passionate about this particular issue. Um, but, beyond, but before I bring her up, um, I just want to make sure, as you get started in this process, uh, we're going to make a, a, a financial commitment from my activities fund grant, an amount of $2,500 just to get you started. You know you have a banquet that you have to do. And so with that being said, we know what the problem is, um, but I want to focus on the solutions and getting things done. And so I'm going to bring up Ms. Tiffany White. Thank you, Councilman. Um, I feel honored and privileged um, to be here, to be a part of this. Um, I know the Councilman mentioned that he wanted me to come up and speak. One is because this is near and dear to me, this project. I actually was a victim of gun violence myself when I was 16 years old. I was shot in my back with the 45. Um, I didn't write a story, of course, back then, but I did have a lot of questions as to one, why did this happen to me? Two, I just couldn't understand it. And you know, I thought people in the community, we, we loved and cared about each other. So I'm very passionate about being a part of this. I'm very passionate to hear the stories of our youth 
who are dealing with it. Again, like I dealt with it, I'm still tra tra traumatized from it. I mean, at the age of 42 now, I still go through um, traumatic experience about it, even if I hear a pop or anything like that. So it's always been near and dear to me, and this is like my, my heart is ho totally in this. So I'm grateful and honored for the councilman to pick me in his office to be a part of this and to work with Judge Dumas and the team um, to, to make a difference and allow our kids to express themselves through this. Thank you. I would like to thank um, Councilman Johnson for putting his money where his mouth is because as you all know, um, everything needs, uh, all, t all these efforts need supports that can keep it uh, moving forward. And to Tiffany, thank you for being so honest and transparent with us because it is that type of trauma we are trying to prevent as it relates to our kids. And for those who have already experienced it, this initiative is to give them the forum and the platform to get that stuff out. Because when that trauma sinks deep down at the core, the manifestation most times is tragic. So at this time, we're going to bring forth our next uh, partner in uh, Police Commissioner Richard Ross, who as we all know, um, violence is at the top of his agenda. So, Commissioner. All right, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, I too wanna thank uh, Judge Dumas uh, for all of you who know her. You know that once she sinks her teeth into something, uh, you better watch out because she's very tenacious and whether it be her work in human trafficking or just in social services in general, she's really, really a hard working lady. Uh, this is a, such an important endeavor, I mean, as it impacts not only young people, but people across the city, but the young people who are undoubtedly traumatized both indirectly and directly as a result of gun violence. And, and we have to recognize that, you know, they, they have a voice and they have ideas that we cannot afford to underestimate. And so their words undoubtedly will resonate with their uh, fellow students in ways that perhaps ours will never. And as such, it just speaks to the collaboration that is needed. And so one of the th reasons that I'm so thankful you know, for this program is, is frequently we're asked as a police department, as we should be, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Well, we in this room in particular, and most people across the city know that one approach is never going to work, right? And that you have to be multifaceted in your efforts to stave off gun violence. And so when you include young people, young people who are impacted by this, this level of uh, violence, it is just one more step and one more piece of that equation. So we're happy to be a part of it, and we're thankful that the young folks are included. So thank you, Judge Dumas, uh, for this program and bringing it back, and thank you for everyone that's involved. At this time, we are going to hear from Council President uh, Daryl Clark, who is another one of our partners who came on very early and committed himself to this project, as did Councilman Johnson. So, President Council Clark. Thank you. Thank you so much, Your Honor. Don't mind if I take this out? Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, um, I, Your Honor, I, I want to thank you for you know dealing with this for a number of reasons. Um, as you know, we have a and have had a challenge dealing with gun violence and other types of violence in our city for quite some time. And there's been different approaches. Uh, you know, I've had the opportunity to talk to the police commissioner on numerous occasions, and we tend to get engaged on the backside, uh, having to deal with individuals once they've gotten to the criminal justice system uh, too often. Um, it is a, a time when there's despair, um, very challenging, very difficult to deal with it. Uh, but taking the approach on the front side, which we always think is better, because preventing gun violence and all types of violence has always, from our perspective, been the best way. Uh, we spend far too much money uh, dealing with it on the backside, um, but we do it because of a whole lot of different things. But if we can take the approach where we spend money on the front side, in this particular approach, when you have built the level of camaraderie among all the individuals who are interested in this, is it's really super and really special. So when you came in my office, one, I, I was going to say yes anyway, because 
you know, we all know the, the judge, Judge Dumas, as the commissioner said, when she asked, you said, yes, ma'am, you know. But because of the approach you're taking, uh, this is very special. So we're just glad I saw my colleague, Councilman Johnson, who's been in the forefront. And I just want to say uh, we're very, very happy to be a part of this very significant initiative. You told me about the people that have been working with you, and I just want to congratulate all of you and thank you all so much for your great work. So we're there, whatever you need. Um, you give us a call. I'm sure budget time, you're going to take me up on that. Um, but it's all good <laughs> because cause at the end of the day, we need resources. So, Your Honor, thank you so much for your great work. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much. At this time, we are going to bring forth uh, another partner without which we we would not be able to even move forward with all of this energy and this effort because without the school district, we would have no children to write the essays. And so uh, with that, I'm going to bring forward Dr. Savoy Brooks to give remarks from the school district of Philadelphia. Good afternoon, I'm Alika Savoy Brooks, the Chief Academic Support Officer for the School District of Philadelphia. And on behalf of the School District of Philadelphia and the Board of Education, we thank you and we thank Judge Dumas for engaging us in this initiative that will not only foster a sense of social justice and social responsibility, but it will also engage our students in critical thinking as they apply literary skills and strategies learned throughout our curriculum. We are encouraging all principals and teachers of students in grades six, to, six through eight to support the students by submitting essays, poems, or even a song that express their personal commitment to breaking the cycle of violence in the home and in our community. We look forward to supporting the city and its efforts to decrease violence, increase peace, increase collaboration, and incorporate problem-solving strategies as we educate our students in the School District of Philadelphia. Thank you. Then I would like to introduce April Brown. April Brown is the principal of Waring Elementary School. Thank you. Good afternoon. Again, my name is April Brown. I am the proud principal of Waring Elementary, serving Fairmount, Francisville, and other uh, neighborhoods in Philadelphia. Waring is thankful for, for the opportunity to participate in the Do the Right Thing Challenge, giving our students an opportunity to examine the impact of youth violence on their lives is critical in healing our communities and our schools. Giving students a voice to make a personal commitment to invest in problem solving, emotional management of their emotions, and reducing violence is the social activism we need so badly to improve our communities. The goal is to help students make moral and ethical decisions as they improve their lives and subsequently their communities. At Waring, we are helping students each and every day, as well as families, staff, and the community at large to be more awesome. To be more awesome each and every day is the goal at Waring. This challenge is just one of our efforts. So I would like to leave you with the quote. Throughout history, it has been the inaction of those who could have acted, the indifference of those who should have known better, the silence of the voice of justice when it mattered most that has made it possible for evil to triumph by Haile Selassie. So I sincerely thank all of you and Judge Dumas for the opportunity to participate in this program. Thank you. I didn't realize that Principal Johnson would be here, but is he still here? Principal Johnson, would you like to come up and have a few words? No, absolutely, come forward. You're one of our partners, thank you. Thank you for coming. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. I'm glad to, to be a part of this program. You know, certainly living in, uh, working in a community uh, where gun violence is something that our students have to face. It's an opportunity for them to be able to, to write about their experiences uh, and write about changing their community. Um, you know, as a community school in Southwest Philadelphia, we absolutely believe in, um, in partnering with our, our local police force, uh, partnering with the, 
uh, our community, uh, to really engage our students uh, in a way that will change outcomes for them. Uh, change it from social emotional perspective, uh, but in this particular lens is a great opportunity as uh, Dr. Savoy Brooks mentioned to really change outcomes from an academic perspective to have our students write about uh, their experiences. Um, we're really happy about this opportunity and so thankful to be a part of it. Uh, thank you to Judge Dumas and all the other partners that are to make this uh, opportunity come to fruition. Thanks so much. So we're almost there. Um, I definitely would be remiss, however, if I did not thank our Do the Right, Philly, Do the right Thing Philly team. Uh, if you could just step out if you're in the front or if you're in the back, um, please stand. Um, these are the people that make it happen. Thank you, yes. Um, and I, I do not have my glasses on, so I, I don't know what big wigs we have out in the audience except for my colleagues. Judge Sheila Wood Skipper and Judge Karen Simmons, thank you for being here. I don't know if anybody else is here, but I see them all the time. Um, so thank you for being here. Everyone else who has a title that I cannot see. Um, Ray Jones, who is in the room, who is our community engagement specialist, who is going to help with funding in this effort. Um, and at this time, I'm going to bring up um, Janice Woodruff who is going to talk about the campaign timeline. Thank you. Hello, I'm Janice Michelle Woodruff. I am co-coordinator for Philadelphia's Do the Right Thing Challenge, which is an initiative of the National Campaign to Stop Violence. Uh, with our respect to our timeline this year, uh, we sent out uh, instruction packets to participating schools in January, and we expect to receive those back February 25th. After that, um, our gracious volunteers will be reading all of the writings that we received from the students and narrowing it down to 10 male and 10 female finalists. At that time, our celebrity judges will be reading those writings and narrowing it down for interviews, which will take place. We will bring in the uh, proposed national ambassadors to be interviewed by a small select group of people. And there we will select one male and one female national ambassador to go to um, the National Recognition Week in Washington, DC. Prior to that, in May, we will have our local recognition dinner or banquet um, or celebration. Um, in July is when the National Recognition Week celebration takes place. Um, our national ambassadors will have the opportunity to have their writings published in the Library of Congress. They will meet with Congress members. Um, they will be given a tour of the Supreme Court, hopefully meet someone on, sitting on the Supreme Court. That happens many years. Um, they will visit the uh, Kuwait Embassy. Um, I'm not sure if anyone knows here that one of the national sponsors to the program is the Kuwait America Foundation. So we have a strong tie with that group. And um, really, the best part of all is our national ambassadors come back to Philadelphia to their local communities, and they are empowered and inspired after collaborating with their counterparts across the nation of more than 40 states in the United States. Um, and they make a change in our local community. And so hopefully next year we can all come back and we look at this and we see what a difference our future leaders made. Thank you. So we were able to steal Janice from Pittsburgh. Her last name is Woodruff. Uh, her father, Judge Woodruff, Dwayne Woodruff from Pittsburgh, leads that effort, this same effort in Pittsburgh. And so because she now lives in Philly, she is a part of the Philly team. So thank you, Janice. It is, it is very, very good to have you. Our other coordinator is Ebony Wortham, our chief of the juvenile unit um, at the district attorney's office. And we are going to bring this uh, effort here today to a close. And I just want to thank everyone for being here. I especially, again, want to thank uh, the team because without you, you know, this wouldn't happen. This is not a one-man show, and anybody that knows me knows that that's the way that I operate. So we are all in it together. We are all working to make this effort very successful. So thank you for being here, for opening your ears to what we are trying to do here in the city as it relates to violence and keeping our babies safe. Thank you. Mm -hmm.